very good day to you and welcome back to the series of videos that we have been shooting since we've been down in this lockdown period well hopefully you've been up in this lockdown period as well and i trust that the videos that we have been shooting have been a real blessing to you and today i'd like to talk about faith and works. If you've been following the series, you'll know that we have been looking at James chapter 1, and so far we've picked different themes out of James chapter 1. But today I'd like to look at James chapter 2, and one of the more poignant, or one of the more pointed themes in chapter 2, of course, is faith without works, or faith and works. So if you have a Bible with you, I'm going to read from the Passion Translation from chapter 2 and verse 14. My dear brothers and sisters, what good is it if someone claims to have faith but demonstrates no good works to prove it? How could this kind of faith save anyone? For example, if a brother or sister in the faith is poorly clothed and hungry, and you leave them saying, goodbye, I hope you stay warm and have plenty to eat, but you don't provide them with a coat or even a cup of soup, what good is your faith? So then faith that doesn't have action is phony. Verse 18 says, but some might object and say, one person has faith and another person has works. Go ahead then and prove to me that you have faith without works and I will show you by my faith, show my faith by my works as I prove that I believe. You can believe all you want that there is one true God. That's wonderful. But even the demons know this and tremble with fear before him. Yet they're unchanged. They remain demons. And then jump down to verse 26. For just as the human body without the spirit is a dead corpse, so faith without the expression of good works is dead. As we are transitioning this time of lockdown, I want to I want you to think for a moment about what you can do for God and what you can't. And the reality is, with what we're facing right now, our ability to travel, to visit friends and family, and to do uh, things like access certain facilities, gyms, and so on, that we possibly were visiting before. Maybe you've never been to the gym, but perhaps you've been visiting those places before this, and now you're in a situation where you're not able to access all of that. I want you to think about what you can do rather than what you can't do for God. James was saying that in the fellowship there are going to be people that are having it tough. There are going to be people without adequate food and clothing. And I'm sure right now you know someone that has either lost a job or has had their hours cut. And the reality is they're doing it tough. I want to suggest to you that in this hour, in this season, we have a unique opportunity to reach out to those that could really use some extra groceries and possibly even some extra uh, clothing at this time. And I want you to think for a moment who those people might be. Because James makes a very important point. He said that not acting on your faith and not demonstrating your faith is actually saying what use or what purpose is your faith. Now verse 18 in this passage is interesting because even James, the brother of Jesus, was having some pushback. Some of the church folk were saying to him, it's okay for you and everyone who wants to, to go and do benevolent deeds. It's probably quite a good thing, but you have your works and I have my faith. But James says, hang on a second. How can you say that your faith is genuine if you're not doing anything about it? And I think, wow, what a powerful lesson. What a time we are in right now where we can actually demonstrate to the body of Christ and to the world that actually we're for real, that our faith is actually genuine. So another way of putting this is your good activities done in response to faith show the genuineness of what you profess. Or perhaps we could say faith create, creates works, works perfect faith. Today, you have an opportunity, like probably only comes around every once in a while, where we can really demonstrate the genuineness of what we profess. Here's the challenge. I want you to think for a moment of someone who is doing it a bit tough. Maybe they're even in the same position that you are right now. And you're thinking to yourself, well, I hope someone comes and helps me. 
Imagine for a moment that there's someone maybe living very close to you who's right now on their knees. Maybe they're stressed out because they don't know where their next meal is going to come from. How about you seek the Lord? How about you ask the Holy Spirit right now, who are the people or who are those persons that I can reach out to right now and show the genuineness of my faith by what I do? So let's do that right now. Let's pause for a moment and think, who could be that person, that family, that one that you've heard about that has lost their job, had their hours cut, and they could really just use a little bit of a help? Just a meal, maybe something simple, maybe something more. I want you to think about that for a moment. Now that you've thought about that, I want you to take the next couple of days to actually act upon that. Go and bless them. Just drop the groceries at their door. You don't have to become Facebook buddies and, you know, uh, become lifelong mates. It's just your way of saying, hey, I want the world to know and I want the church to know that I'm for real. I am not God's undercover agent. My faith is the genuine article. Well, I really hope that today's teaching has been a blessing to you and that there's something in what we've looked at for you today. And I encourage you to stay tuned over the next few days as more inspirational messages will be posted on Facebook. God bless you. Have a great week.